Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Fishing the South. Today, I'm going to do an in-depth review on my Ocean Kite Trident 13. And just to go over a few things, I purchased this kayak in early December. I've had it for just about a month, a month and a half. I've gone out a couple of times. And um, the reason I didn't do a review right when I got it is because I wanted to do a really good review um, and I wanted to have a little bit of experience with it to give kind of my opinion. And so first we're going to start out with the top half of this kayak and we're going to go into the Mod Pod in the middle section and we're going to go to the back. Okay, so we're going to start at the front. And right here we have a little plug to um, drain water if we ever get water inside of the kayak. Then we have the standard handle that um, most kayaks come with a handle in the front of the back. And then we have a red towel just a safety precaution due to the fact that it is an extension from the bed of the truck or um, the top of my car. And so now we're going to come into the next part, the main um, hatch that to help hold most of the storage. And here we have a really sturdy, strong clip. And then it comes in here. And the great thing about all the products on this kayak that can come off is everything comes with this attached to some sort of the, some. It's attached to something on the kayak. So if something falls in the water, it's not going to float away and you'll never see it again. It'll be within arm's distance of grabbing it. And so this, there's the main um, part of the kayak. Um, this main section goes all the way through the kayak. So you can store rods in there if you have smaller rods. I can't do that just for the fact that I have 7 foot plus rods. Um, but in here I just have a net, um, an anchor, and some other miscellaneous stuff. But mandatory, um, not mandatory, but um, something that comes with the kayak is a little bag, um, a little bag here, and um, it's attached to the top of the kayak, and that's a spot where you can store your battery for a fish finder. So put this back down because that's the main. So now I'm done with this front hatch, and I'm coming to this over here. And excuse the uh, yellow rope, this is kind of like my pulley system to uh, attach it and uh, have storage for it. And this is the next section. And this here, I get a lot of questions about this, people wondering what it is. But this is where you would place your fish finder or um, GPS system of some sort. And I'm going to get a Lawrence um, Elite 4X or Elite 4 fish finder, but that's going to be way in the future. But um, there only have two small complaints about this little thing. Is it sits pretty far from the seat, and you'll see that in a few seconds. And so it's going to be a little harder to um, see. As well as it sits in a hole that's about four inches deep. So you're going to have to buy some sort of extension to be able to see your fish finder better. Okay, so that's about it for this section. And actually, I'll go over this real quick. Is there's a scupper plug in here that is um, uniquely designed for a scupper plug transducer. So if you can, if you want to buy the scupper plug set, you can use that, and that's what I'm probably going to do. Um, but I haven't decided yet. And so now we're done with the first half of this, and or the first third actually. And so we're going to go into the second part of this kayak. Stay tuned. Hey guys, and welcome back. And as you can see, we moved to the middle section of the kayak. And first, I'm going to start out, I'm going to go, we're going to go front to back, so I'm going to start out here with the foot pedals. And these foot pedals are very sturdy, come with this jelly kind of material where your foot would sit and rest. And um, so it's, it's as simple as lift and slide. Slide it to whatever location you want. And when you're kayaking, you always want your knees bent a little bit, so I leave it right in there. This um, helps me um, pedal a little bit harder and a little bit stronger. And um, so now I'm um, going to the Mod Pod, and as you can see, I have just um, minor modifications to it. I have a Scotty rod holder here, and um, this is the one that's like $15 or $17. And um, I just want to give you guys a little opinionated here, um, but um, go with the $22 one, I believe is what it is. Um, it's the Power Lock one. Um, it's a lot easier, and I like it a lot more. Um, but I really didn't think about it at the time, I just bought this one, and, but 
if you have the extra like four or five dollars, go with the power lock system Scotty Rod holder. And as you can see, I have a pedal um, leash here, and um, it's just wrapped around my rod holder for now, just for the video. But um, I have an Aqua Aqua Bound Stingray Hybrid, I think is the name of my paddle. And it's a pretty nice paddle, um, but I'm probably going to do a review on that later on. But um, just a few things here. I'm going to unclip it, as you can see. Two nice and strong clips here on this mod pod. That's a little tight. There we go. And so now I'm just going to lift this up and talk to you guys about this real quick. And as you can see, that's how quick it comes off. You can store um, rods in here. You can store, I have a life jacket in here right now. You can store all sorts of stuff inside of this kayak. And um, as you can see, this comes with an inches and a centimeters um, measuring tape there. Um, it's pretty accurate. Um, I already uh, tested it with a ruler um, and it seems to be pretty spot on. And um, as you can see, I have my paddle leash attached here. You can also put a rod leash or um, uh, several different things. Um, basically, anything you can think of, you can clip it onto there. And I'm just going to clip this back on real quick. And we're going to move down. Oh, yeah. And also, as the same as the, um, the big hatch up there, it comes with a string that attaches. So if this falls out, you um, have it in reaching distance. And it comes with these little um, knock. And every single one of these little notches here, you can put different things like camera mounts, rod holders, um, GPS systems. Basically, the um, things you can do with that is endless. And you can also move this up and down with these little notches. And you can also buy different ones that you can put up here. And what I do with these is whenever I'm on the water and I want to. I know there's some bass in an area, but I don't want to have to reach back there. I'll toss a few of my, I'll toss maybe a few hooks in there and a few little lures that um, are kind of my go-to baits, and I'll toss them in there so I have them right there. And I'm also going to probably add some sort of safe box or a, a dry box inside of the kayak just for my phone and wallet and um, uh, my license when I need one. But uh, as you can see, the rock pod is very versatile and uh, very unique addition that most of the kayaks don't have. Very unique to the Trident 13 and uh, the Trident Ocean kayaks in general. And so now we're going to move down to the seat. The seat is very comfortable to sit in. I could sleep in this kayak because the seat is so comfortable. Um, adjustable right here with this. I just have it tucked in there. But you can tighten it, loosen it. I'm not going to do it because I have it set it perfect for me right now. But what I do at the end of this is I just tuck it in here so it's not flapping around or in the water when you paddle and get all wet. I just slip it in there and it stays and it won't go anywhere. And uh, I usually have this one like that but it's a little shorter so I usually just sit it in the kayak. And so now I'm going to talk about this right here. You might be able to see this little notch. I'm not sure if you can. Lift the kayak a little bit more. And right there is a little notch. And I get this rubber band strap. And I pull it over. And I just let it sit like that. And that's how I can store my paddle. If I am in a situation where I just um, caught a bass and um, or if I'm anchored down and don't need it, I can attach it on there and just fish. And don't have to worry about the paddle sitting across my lap the whole time. <clears throat> and as you can see, just some small little things here and there. Uh, as you can see, there's a handle right here. Um, that's about it for the middle section. Um, I'm going to go into the back, se back, se back section, excuse me. And um, the back section actually has the most modifications to it, so it's going to look a little different than when you're just receiving your kayak. Okay, so stay tuned and um, we'll get to the next part in a second. Hey guys, welcome back. So now we're at the back, and as you can see, there's a few more modifications in the rest of the kayak. And so I'm going to start up at the, fr at the front, as I have every time. So I'm going to start up. This is um, a rod holder. This um, Trident 13 comes with two rod holders, and um, I kind of have a major complaint about um, 
the rod holders. Um, the rods will sit at a very, very steep angle. They sit, they come out like, like this, basically. And uh, that has really, um, <clears throat> it almost lost me a, a rod. And um, the, the problem with a <clears throat> rod holder that sits like that is if you ever get hung up in a tree and you're going in, and there's overhanging branches, or you're trying to flip into a tight um, little spot, um, your rods will get hung up in the tree. When, if you're sitting back here in a milk crate with a rod holder on it, they'll be sitting a little bit higher, and so they'll just go straight in, and once I'm backing out, they'll hit me in the head if they're stuck up in the tree and they've come out of the rod holder. When with this, if I'm backing out of a tree, I'll be sitting up to the side, and if my rod's black, like my rage rod, I may not see it in a darker brown wooded tree. And that's a big problem because I almost lost a rod the other day. I just happened to notice that it was missing on my way back to the landing, and um, paddled back, and we found it, and it was in a tree. And um, my friend actually noticed it, um, so I was really fortunate that he was with me, and that. Um, I was just not very far from the location and that it was still up in the tree and not falling out and into the water. But um, that's my major complaint about that. So we're going to move into this next little cubby section and as you can see I have an old academy bag and I used to use this a long time ago when I just went from pond to pond but I've kind of evolved into uh, the type of warehouse backpack and I'll probably do a review on that later on. But um, in here I will store on the side, it comes with a soft zipper, and I have two things in here. I have a whistle, which I will attach to my life jacket whenever I go out, and then a fish grip. And I'm also going to put a pair of scissors and pliers in there. But uh, a great little spot to store supplies, and I store my soft plastics in here, because as you may know, I fish a lot of soft plastics, whether it's wacky worms, cheetah crawls, craw baits, creature baits. So, soft body swim baits, I mean, you name it, I, I fish all the soft baits, soft plastic baits there is. And then back into the, now also you can uh, pull the scale in there pretty well. And uh, so back into this milk crate, and I've seen a lot of videos where guys are just like, yeah, I got a milk crate, and I just I have that question of where did you get your milk crate? And so you can buy one for like $13 at Austin Canoe and Kayak. That's where I bought this kayak. And uh, I live in Austin, Texas, so it was right down the road. But um, I saved $10 and I drove around town. And um, one thing I need to tell you is if you go to HEB, if you take um, a milk crate, that's considered stealing because they have them just in the back. But if you go to like um, if you live in a small town, like I was in Refugio at the time, and I drove behind a Valero, and this was in the dumpster. And I mean, if they're if it's in the dumpster, they they don't want it. You can just go dumpster diving for ten seconds, and you can save yourself self twelve thirteen dollars. And that's what I did. I went to a Valero, and um, they had one sitting next to a dumpster ready to be dumped. And um, I said, why not? And grabbed it. And uh, I went and bought a $20, this is the only thing that um, is very expensive, is a, I bought $20 and I went and bought a, um, a tri rod holder, um, as you can see here, and I got this at Academy. You can buy these Austin Canoe and Kayak, just basically any sports fishing place in the nation that will hold them. And i um, just going to move around real quick, I'm going to show you something. And as you can see, I have this tied down with a bungee here. And then my milk crate, it's a little wobbly, but it, it's pretty solid in there. And what I did is I cut these notches, I'm not sure if you can see that, but these notches. And um, that gave me a little bit more space, and so a little less rub on these, um, on these bungee cords. And so, I mean, this has this pretty tight, um, tightly tugged in there. And then I tied uh, the fish um, 
rod holders down with zip ties. You can buy zip ties at Academy for like three dollars. And um, I'll have my dividers in here. I haven't decided what all I want to do with this. Um, it'll just be a, a minor storage compartment, basically. And then, so that's I mean, that's that's basically the kayak. Um, come back here. There's just a, a handle and then a rudder system, but I don't have a rudder on there because um, I didn't really see the need to purchase one for another two hundred dollars. But um, endless possibilities with the back of your kayak. Um, you can do anything from purchase a um, you can you can like purchase like a heavy duty like fish made milk crate that has comes with rod holders. I know Austin Canoe Kayak sells too, and then they also sell sell a um, crate buddy. I think is the name of it. It's like a sleeve that you put on, and it was like fifty dollars just for like two cheap rod holders on the back, and then like a cover. And um, I didn't really see a need to get that. It's kind of a waste of money. But I mean, if you have money and um, you have money to spend, that's a, a a great option is to get, buy the buddy system. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this review. Um, I hope you uh, I hope you learned something about the Trident 13. Uh, I'm not trying to convince you to purchase one. I'm just giving the people that want to buy one um, a little ideas on um, what the kayak's all about and. Um, just a great all-around kayak, um, probably one of the best kayaks on the market, one of the most versatile. You can go BTB, fish little ponds. Um, you can do just about anything in this kayak, and um, I really hope you um, leave a like and um, ask some questions. If you have any questions, I will definitely answer you. Um, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time on Fishing